going back even further into your history, pre Taipa Vincent, you've held several analytics leadership positions for consulting firms like a VP of Advanced Analytics for Decision Brain. Uh, you were a director of Advanced Analytics for IBM. And so you were working on problems across a broad range of industries apparel, container terminals, semiconductors, fast food, airspace, finance. Um, so you've alluded to some of these things already in this episode, like shipping containers in Singapore, McDonald's, um, Antimarché. Um, but how are, if there are some kind of insights that you can provide to our audience from having worked across all of these different verticals with so many different kinds of companies, um, are there any trends that you see out there in terms of how um, companies manage their data or um, set up machine learning applications with, you know, to learn from their data? Um, I'd love to hear about uh, your thoughts on this. And, and then something that kind of ties into this personally <laughs> is, do you think that this kind of, um, this kind of experience that you have, having worked for so many different kinds of companies across so many different kinds of industries, do you think that this kind of approach gives people an advantage when they then later come to build a general solution like TaiPi? Okay, so a wide topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely uh, over the years, uh, we have seen, a, as I mentioned earlier, also big differences in uh, in application and we, we 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 you definitely need to build over the years best practices to educate your customers um, um, for them to be successful uh, they spend a lot of money on, on some of these systems uh, and the roi can be very large that's why people talk about ai is all about roi very often um, so yeah, so what I want to say is that um, there are a few things. So we see some areas of excellence. So for instance, you may have in a company really a group that does extremely extraordinary stuff uh, with AI application or some data. The challenge that we see is how to spread this to the operations, to the different uh, functions within the company whether at the finance level, like in Intermarché, where they really looked at optimizing and predicting cash flow for the whole company, to just people, planners in, in the port of Singapore or port of Hong Kong, where they need to plan for the loading and loading of vessels, to the factories of Samsung and TSMC, which needs to dispatch all their different plots and wafers to the different, all these expensive machines. Um, and, the, and we see really two categories, what we call the automated thing. So basically you don't have any users. So this, this, a lot of things are, are, have been put in place, but it's like an iceberg, you know, the, the, the really the big thing in the future uh, is really to get all these smart algorithms in the hands of end users. And that, that's really about all about it. So, and that's what TaiPi has been designed for. And, and I'm seeing, um, a big challenge here, um, where how do you make, and, and I've seen also some smart data scientists that are also a bit dreaming sometimes about their own algorithm. Like, you know, I've exposed my algorithm, it works perfectly on this data. I've finished, I've finished my job and thinking that it will be whatever the, gen the algorithm generates will be automatically applied. That's not the case when you deal with end users. They would want to do what if analysis. That's why we have these scenarios. They would want to change parameters to play and decide what what really um, uh, to do with it. So this is really uh, the big challenge for AI in general: is how do you, do you make end users use these algorithms? And this is why we have created TypePy, and uh, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, especially now that you know everybody programs in Python, uh, you have to be successful with this. Uh, and it's not about you know automate what I call automated AI, where you do automatic image recognition, automatic this, automatic that. 
it's about you know bringing humans to interact with this algorithm however small they are and for this you need intuitive interface you need to do it easily quickly and to connect really uh, with the, 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 the people developing the graphics, the algorithms, and the end users together. So very often, uh, whether you read books, you listen to people, they usually stop at the area of expertise. So it works too much as a silo. So we, we and I think that's the biggest uh, opportunity also for, for the future. Um, so that, that's what we're seeing. AI in a lot of applica in a lot of industries, these industries are used in isolation, very often as an automated AI algorithm. And this area where it's used for, with end users and foreign users is just beginning. 